uh, the Strokes and uh, last night. Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we, from uh, um, Johnny Mango. Oh yeah, Johnny Mango, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, old, 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 old the Mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Adge Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah. It was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was, uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Uh, apples and jams. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, I wonder, is that true? Who I, knows? I, 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 JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope the Mango Boy's not... Having a laugh at me. Is that true? Jo uh, one of the Wurzels died by tractor. <laughs> Did he- d is, is that true? So, give us a call. What's is the number know? again, Carl? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If so, I'm- I'm sorry that I disrespected them. I didn't- I didn't know. Could you imagine? Oh, God. If- Right. Say if, like, you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. And you- c you kill someone, you go, oh, God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look and it's someone famous. Yeah, or Adge Cutler. <laughs> Yeah, go on, what was your point? <laughs> no, it's just like, not Terrifying, only, yeah. it's like you've killed someone, then you look. But I mean, yeah, I know what you mean, actually. And what that makes is, it even worse? <laughs> and what, what makes it even worse, they were rich? Yeah. Oh, that no, would be... No, but say if it was someone who's, like, really big in the world. No, that is a good, I quite like that, it's an interesting point, though. Oh, that's your bag, no wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well... As Bono said. Did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just... Is that under there, Rick? Sorry, sorry about this, I'm not, I'm not ignoring... Record. This is getting a bit slop sloppy, no, you know? No, 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 it is, Rick, it's getting it's sloppy. It. It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here, because we went to, um, this award ceremony in the week, um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, let yeah. me, I have to explain it to Carl, because, uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the, the, it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for, uh, Television and Radio Industries Club annual awards, right? We'd it's never heard of it either. We'd never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio, uh, industry club. Right. That's yeah, that's a clue, isn't it? So, um, but then we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing and they really made an effort and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours, before we had fun. to sit down. And, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I'm literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV, radio, industry names, on-screen talent, behind-the-scenes people. People. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um, Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so it, 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 the voice comes on and says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the president, the, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards. And we had to stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation as he walked to his table to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out, he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like straight away, it was you know, old school stuff. You want know, to thank the ladies, because, you know, it was nothing without the ladies, all the lovely ladies here. And we're waiting for a joke? No. Nope. <laughs> just, thank just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we ate. Right. It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little, um, disabled fella, right? And he's, he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. we you know, we're, we're, we're standing up during oh, no, grace. Can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, <laughs> and, um... Sorry, did we bore you? <laughs> <laughs> You just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who was yeah. in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said blah blah blah, and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, "What's happened to you?" They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So yeah. Oh. You're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> so go on. <laughs> and uh, Tom O'Connor, he said, uh, uh, "Thank you, God, for." We thought this was a joke initially. We thought it was going to be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's why. We, that's God. why we were laughing. Out loud. <laughs> that's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> <laughs> we went anyway, and then he went, I thank you for this, uh, and, uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went, what about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, I've never been, I've never been left out of grace before. <laughs> so, but we had to, and we had to like, kind of, like, bow our heads slightly, you know, and, uh, did we say amen? I know that we were sort of, lots of people did. I'm pretty sure Cliff, I did. I think, probably ch chimed in there. Yeah. And he sang um, it. Yeah, exactly. So, um. Like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so, but before, again, you see, what Ricky's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage, this guy walks up there, I don't know who he is, says, there's a lot of people here this city this afternoon, you know, it's a wonderful uh, event, but of course there's a load of celebrities as well. He said, thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up. And then he went, table 77, Mr. Russ Abbott, and we all round of applause. Can we, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. Um, absolutely, he looked like, uh, a bit like, um, uh, Barrett Holmes, the <laughs> hilarious Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went, table 107. The cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. And then he went, <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. 
clap. Slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, when is this gonna- uh, He went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, a hundred. Table 53! John Inman, everyone! It's John Inman! Round of yeah, applause. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, uh, table 70. Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo! Yeah, there was, there was booing yeah. there. And yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a joke. Ironic booing, I think. Could the cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> we didn't I, see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show. When they went up, they won an award. Cowell and, uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, 43. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons. <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we, we kind of legged it upstairs and were watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> and empty it was yes. empty. <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But, uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, because Sir Cliff was giving out the, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he used to speak, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford, right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievement I think living that long. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I don't know what is she's done, I Gloria Hunniford. I don't know what she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done Radio 2, so I don't think that's we're not anymore. Dissing, we're not dissing no, anyone. We're not her. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know, uh, but anyway, it was she... just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad-lib a speech, right, and I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, it's partly work, it's partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, actually she's been there for a long time. Yeah. And it's like, I was thought she was going, she doesn't call, you yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how she <laughs> We well, thought she was going to get photos out, maybe, start showing it. it no, was but it was, very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and, uh, you know, everyone there, Henry Coop was there. So Henry <laughs> it was so good because every single was element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu, I've got the programme here, and the menu, right, the pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you were out of pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, right. when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut? <laughs> like, like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you had Did you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like, you'd do that, you'd do your, um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Can you ever do that? <laughs> Table 60. Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> that's a uh, corner shop. Lessons learned from Rocky One to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's mm. great. It's real glam rocky. That's T Rex and Bowie. I was not. I played some up from uh, Ziggy Stardust today, but instead I brought in a different album. I was a bit of Bowie. Is that mm. all right? Oh, of course. Yeah, always. Yeah, always. A bit of Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we uh, uh, with the education of Carl. Last week he did. Um, uh, Che Guevara. He did very, very well. well. Yeah. Before that, the week before that, you learned all about Rasputin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm. How does that go? Do, how do you like that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. It's, um, mm. they're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. Um, things aren't going well, and they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. Right, I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can... I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara... It's the same thing. Some... Che Guevara, when he was a kid, yeah. had, like, asthma, yeah. right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he, um... He only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah. Seriously, he phoned me up in the week. I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it. I've just skimmed it. I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out or it's not true. Right. Which, so which he was, was he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you, look, did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles. <laughs> testicles absence of. Sort of skimmed through. Cause <laughs> one of. It, yeah. it, mother, mother, brackets <laughs> other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in, in like, when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on and somebody put a bag in, a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah. yeah. And but I the wondered table whether it was under him. the table. Yeah, but. What, you're wondering if it blew a testicle? It was, it was, what, well, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top and so that's where he could have lost. But why would he have only just lost the one? Uh, because the- The way he was sitting. <laughs> Cross-legged or something. 
sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, I mean, again, again, if, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert phoned up. Maybe they could, uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could uh, maybe phone up and confirm the, uh, the testicle, uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. What's the number again, Carl? Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. You need to have at least I, I, had a PhD I, I, or something. I don't right? think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm no. talking about someone who's done a study of him and who's done a PhD. Oh, okay, I'm not talking oh, about right. any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it, and I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no. Even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on the, more on the right lines there. <laughs> is there is anyone who um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A level maths that can bear? Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks, I was trying to, I, I know I was tr uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is, the, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but then any other individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. You, I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to combine, it's not, Carl. If there's a, a probability... Well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it, it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number there's of combinations a, that have never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up yeah. have happened, and they're just as likely, or unlikely, as any other combination. Right? Mm -hmm. It's just that you feel intuitively, right, that one, two, three, four, five, six are l is less likely than one, seven, twelve, thirty four, sixty. You know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. <laughs> Play record. Okay. <laughs>on XFM 104.9. Well, here we are, the day before St. Patrick's Day. Oh, hooray! Brilliant! Guinness, etc. Oh, I hate people, I hate British English people, I should say, who are obsessed with celebrating St. Patrick's Day. You know, all crazy, it's like Chris Evans used to rave on about it. We're going to Dublin, we're going to get drunk, wow. It's like, it means nothing I to me. I think XFM people, just did that, to be well, honest. Well, yeah, exactly. Just as bad. Careful, careful, they are employers. <laughs> you don't want to annoy them. What, what would we do without this? <laughs> well, that's true. I yeah, have an enjoyable Saturday. No, this is my favourite two hours. You like this, don't you? Well, I don't know. We're not, we can't do this through May and June. No, we'll be gone. We've got to, be, we've got to record the second series of The Office. What are we going to do, Carl? What are you going to do on a Saturday? Host a show yourself? Do it on my own. Yeah. You, you are not. Are you seriously thinking of it? If they ask you to do everything you like. Why, why would you not think about it? Because I've, I've been there, done that. <laughs> 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 Next challenge, please. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Do you know what, do you know uh, what St. Patrick did? Why he was revered as a saint and everything? What was he famous for in Ireland? He did, he rid Ireland of something. I don't know, but I bet he started off with something odd happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think he had asthma or something as a kid? Ah! They, all, they all do. Uh, and he took it out on what though? What did he, he exactly, he took it out on something. What did he do? What did he rid Ireland of? Uh St. Patrick. St. Patrick. This is why we're going to get crazy and drunk tomorrow. This is why we're all so happy to celebrate his uh, anniversary or whatever it is yes. we're celebrating. This is that's why, why we, we... That's why we have a crack. Yeah, this is why we don't bother to celebrate, you know, the birthdays of James Joyce, you know, one of the great novelists of this century, or Samuel Beckett, one of the great playwrights. We actually celebrate this man, St. Patrick, the man oh, who I did don't, what? Oh, I don't diss him. He did a good job of it as well, because there's none there now. There are none of these in Ireland. So... Mm. He rid Ireland of something. Come on, Carl. Think of something. Just give us an answer. What's he went round on a horse whacking them and... He went on a horse whacking them? Yeah. yeah. What was it, Carl? What did he rid Ireland of? Went on a horse. Foxes. I don't well, know. Well, no, you're no, on the right lines. On the right lines. Um, it was an animal. Oh. Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was bears. <laughs> Wow. It was snakes. Right. And there are no snakes in Ireland. He rid Ireland of all the snakes. Yeah. Who did it here then? Because there isn't that many. <coughs> well, I think he, he had a he had a stab at it over here as well, but got tired and went back. Yeah. That's why there's it's, just a few snakes here. Is, is it true that there are no snakes in Ireland? I think it is. I think if, if someone called it. And what is there? Is there any historical evidence for St. Patrick ridding them of? I mean, how did he do it? Was it like the Pied Piper? See, I, I, I'm not convinced that 
he did go around because there were snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think there is now. If someone knows these now, we were someone just uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths graduates confirming that indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls, which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, but coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done Rasputin, he's done Che Guevara. Plus, of course, uh, White Van Carl, where we White ask Van Carl, Carl some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learn as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there. Yeah. That was thrown in for free, that was an extra... I'll, I'll learn you something eh? snakes. Well, I'll, sorry, can I just stop you there and I'll teach you something, right? Oh, go on then. You don't learn someone something, you teach them something. Yeah. It's it's not it, 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 it one's passive. You you, Do you, you learn, you? Ricky. I'm or, sorry, mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. Snake. It's like it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly, because there's so many errors you're making. It's like where to start with you? <sighs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes. Yeah. For, a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a it's like a. <laughs> familiar type thing that's n that happens to snakes okay people. yeah they take it for granted don't they right snakes born two heads they'll fight each other for food even though it's going in the same body isn't that weird mm. were there kids at school that you went <laughs> <laughs> who had two heads the, the that? snake twins yeah from mosley Oh, was, it, was, it, was this, there was kids at your school with two heads, was that right? What? No, no, they had, they big, had heads. big heads. Oh, they had big heads. And webbed hands, but they right. weren't related. And they, they weren't friends, because that would have been too obvious, yeah. he said. Yeah. Oh, oh, Steve, listen, before you came in, right, I sneezed a couple of times. I don't know if I'm allergic to them, I've still got a bit of a cold. And I said, oh, God, he went, he went, bloody hell, I was like, sorry. And he went, and he went, you know you can't sneeze with your eyes open? I went, yeah. Yeah, and then he was obviously thinking to himself still, and after a pause he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I started laughing, he went, no, because that, has anyone ever done that thing? <laughs> has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then, and then he went, uh, I, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> Your song, eh, Ricky? Oh, this, uh, yeah, uh, um, Bowie. Sorrow. Beautiful. Sorrow by David Bowie. Uh, I got that on a compilation today, but I, I think it's off originally off uh, the Pin Ups album, the one we did all the covers, because he didn't write that, did he? That was the one with um, him and Twiggy on the front cover, isn't it? Right. I haven't had that for ages. I haven't got that. So uh, sorry, you lost me. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you reading a book there? No, I was just reading the um, the uh, brochure there, the uh, program, if you will, for the uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we we, we lost. Mm. Uh, we we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. For the best comedy. But uh, you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 when his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I noticed it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't, we've got to say by surprise from behind. But, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn, Follow Me, I'm Right Behind You, and Eat Like a Horse, Drink Like a Fish. Does it but, mention Celebrity Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did, um, the Crosswits. name that tune. Well, that's right. Um, I was. Well, it's uh, Crosswits. Do you remember Crosswits? It, it was, was from the eighties. It was like a crossword game oh, show. It was yeah. often with um, Kate Copstick. But <laughs> I saw one right. It was on. The, it was on Challenge uh, TV. Being repeated. And no, Andy Crane. Remember Andy Crane? Yeah. Children? He was on the. He was the uh, link man, and he went coming up next. Uh, Tom O'Connor with uh, uh, Crosswits. With uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best Crosswits players of all time, John Junkin. <laughs> 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 oh. Who's your favourite Crosswits player? Uh, oh, it's got to be Junkin, for me as well. But Copstick was Barry all right. Barry Cryer's bloody good. Though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff um, uh, in the week. This is with Toxic and uh, yeah, Cryer. Yeah, it was, it was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I imagine you could get on there if you wanted. I used to watch it with, um, what's his name? Frank Moore. <laughs> yeah. Frank Moore. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, that was great. You were impression. brilliant impressions, because obviously I, while Bowie was playing, you were doing your infamous Bowie impression, which is th the best one you do, actually. Well, that's just because Carl said, you know what, he said, I'd love to go out for a drink with David Bowie. Of all the people that come in here for sessions, I think he's really good him. And I said, I think he'd like you as well. That's all, and I just went, hello, Carl. You're strange, you're alien. It interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on the... Yeah, I just imagine you and Bowie in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> but not on air. On air he's sort of like this sort of eloquent 40-year-old capital DJ. Yeah. And but uh, when you talk to him in the studio... In, he's, he's, slowly like turning, he's, st he's slowly turning into uh, Tommy Vance, isn't he? Mm. This is one of his pillars of rock, Canfield. He loves Vance, <laughs> Lemmy, uh, Diano. If we uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is you know likely, yeah, uh, considering we're, we're now talking about no, Ian we ran out of it at five past one, <laughs> exactly. But could we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie? Yeah, you know, that sort would... of humorous sketch. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if like David Bowie was you know a cab driver? What well, would he say? What was his well, funny the, things he would? We take? saw that. Um, that what was that in when it said uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what uh, yeah, it would did sound you see like, this? De Dead Ringers is this impressionist show. They did a, it's on Radio Four. And they did a TV version. Yeah, I saw it. What did you make of it? Didn't like it. It was all right. No, it was just that the write up in uh, the Radio what Times. Magazine, I think it was. The Radio Times said, uh, "Ever wondered what it would be like if uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby, or what would it be like if uh, there was an animal it was, hospital was, was hosted was, by uh, Anne Robinson?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, do you know, I have. I have wondered. Was yeah. it, Were those two sketches on there last night? Yeah. Yeah. What were yeah. they like? You are, you are the weakest... You are the weakest dog Skink. <laughs> no, what was it? It was something like... The, 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 they had to vote off an animal to die or something. It was something like that, yeah. It was this is right. flagging. Quick, do your Bowie again. Um, oh, come in here. Look, it's Tim Machine. Now let's play Changes. Hello. Iggy Pop, you nutter! Stop cutting your sound! <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9, 2 o'clock, halfway through. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? My yeah. favourite time of the week where we come in here and uh, play some records, have a chat. Ricky, a lot of people are wondering who you are. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hi. There's little Carl over there. Right. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, <laughs> we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. Noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. Don't know why I'm <laughs> yeah. What's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't know and aren't familiar with this feature, basically uh, The Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of, every, every men and women, their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week... Not like um, us to rip off another idea and just no, use no, it for no, our own... No, 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 no. No, but this time... The yeah, white van man in The Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow in Middlesex. Um, Herbie. And he's been as he's asked, uh, asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours, on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay. Come um, on, Carl. It's... I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is... is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right... In, and Freddie Mercury. I was into, uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now... And her kids You're not going to tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's, you know... A, a leather, yeah, right. Mm. I wouldn't say right. That's it. I'm taking kids in America back to the shop. I'm disgusted. Sure, I liked her. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna like meet her and, and marry her and that. So what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, he's a good voice. He's gay. You know, a lot of gay people in the world. Georgie boy was gay. I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So Do no your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Kidding of Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, trying to get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy helmets anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
They want flat caps. They feel that their um, they, you know, they, their powers are resrictive. They get a lot of bad press. They're not being paid. Well. They they're not, they're only they, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think they may have done yeah. yet. Yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They're, go they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at That's they were looking I... for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did this German tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears? She's been dumped by her boyfriend. There's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl. <sighs> What, you what, what are the signs? Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe. She'll be all right. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it. I don't even think about it now. <laughs> 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 what? Uh, and how long did it take you? How long did it take you to get over Zoe Harris? How long did it take to you? To be through? honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends, and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because she will not stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I remember- <laughs> A good reason that, to that, that. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her, and then the <laughs> bit that really got me, I thought I half liked her, and then I remember, right, we are at a school party, sort of infant school. Infant? <laughs> 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 infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, it's, it's on the cusp. Uh, yeah. Right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And, um, she was crying because- You were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh she? Had you she stolen her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You, <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap? I just think of him at like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald, going, for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it, because all her mates were saying, come on, Carl, she's upset, and I was like, oh, whatever. So <laughs> again. Hold on, though, wait a minute, what do you mean all her mates were saying, like, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying, help her out. And, like, and like, you did just, nothing? I don't know. She got injured. <laughs> Got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset and you were her boyfriend. Well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her why dress. It didn't work out, he said. I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings. Cur his current yeah. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, she didn't so, know, as far as you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, she's going to make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole. Screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and given her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we I would. We were playing dead arm. <laughs> in the corner. Ask him another oh, question. Okay, very final, oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that, uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about, uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse, this is basically saying, should papers be allowed to print tittle-tattle about celebrities. Oh, this is... Providing it's proven true. Oh, this, this is something about, isn't it, a Division One football or something? It's definitely had a, a, a premiership football, it was unfair. And it is true, but he's trying to keep privacy. And the judge said, well, it's not for us to sense the press over things that are true. Right. It's up to the general public to either boycott or not, you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it, but... No. People are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has to go at Beckham for not being that bright. But at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. It doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, but what if you I were a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. Yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah. I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I won't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like kind of head butting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it it was with people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, with my mates. Right. 
So okay. you were playing Dead Arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. And you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, well, dear. what track we got here? You've got in a track Yes, yeah, so I just thought I'd dig out some old uh, Elliot Smith. Uh, I've quite enjoyed his work. And this was a previous single and uh, the first track from his album Figure Eight, Son of Sam. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was going to uh, back announce that track and just mention it was uh, Elliot Smith and the track Son of Sam. Well, I think I'd just better ask um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can, uh, we can you know, get on with our lives. Okay, yeah, we can tick that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that, uh, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Put okay, that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's week, it's, it's week three of his education. We've, you've nailed Russ Butin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I'll maybe um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, keep your your mind on it. But Hitler, what, tell what us a story. What have you learnt? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up in a minute. What you? Th what, what I can't do, you do it in a minute. <laughs> well, uh, can I ask some questions then? Uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. Um, <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> what in his early life? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He, what's the name? His his um his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> He's going. Yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez, There's no cool. need for that. There Go was on. Uh, there was there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including uh, him and his sister, survived. The others died at an early age. Okay. Right. right. Um, anyway, so, they grew up, and, um, the mum died, and the dad died, and that, and he thought, oh, what am I going to do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right, and then, um, so he said, right, I'm going to go out to Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff, and just didn't like him. So he went to Munich and um, he uh, joined the army. Right. Yeah? Yeah. And um, he was in the army and he got injured. Right. So he went to hospital and whilst he was in hospital, uh, the World War One ended and he was like, oh God, I want to... I was join that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't, because you're breaking the concentration. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right, go on. Right, so, um, so... He was in hospital. He was in hospital. Ended. It gets a bit better. He's never that fit, though. He's one of these blokes who was always ill. Uh, was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. What? Um, God, you know, I knew it all this morning. I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going. I'm, the, I'm not nailing the fact, am I? And joined a, another army, and he was. Well, <laughs> let's, listen, let's try to help you. So here's a good bit. Here's a good bit. I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. All right, right. So it's like, um, <laughs> you know, you, you fight for nine months, and at the end of it, you own something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, he, he goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's fighting his way through, like, you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does, uh, does he do Berlin? Does he? Sorry, wait a minute. Is, is he, is he, uh, <laughs> is he Chancellor yet? Uh, what year is it? 35? So let's what, skip, let's skip the kind of climb to power then. He's now, he's now, he's now the dictator of Germany. Right, he's in yeah. charge, yeah. And this is when, you know, he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's, he's, uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and, and all this. And, uh, anyway, cut a long story short, he, uh... Please do. He, uh, when he came to, like, f fighting Britain... Yeah. Came a bit sort of un unstuck. Yeah. Right? Started fighting Not back. so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. Yeah. So well, thought, oh god, so a bit he goes, late, but yeah, go he, on. Go, he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like Germany, sort of surrenders. 
Yeah. Says it's all over, forget it, we can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this and he thought, oh, I can't, I can't show my face around here. <laughs> so he, uh... Because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's, <laughs> he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife. Right. Eva, in this bunker. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, so he said, oh, I've had enough of this. He shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> she poisons herself. And the chauffeur buries them or something, or burns them. Right. And uh, in all the time he was in charge, 50 million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between it felt like that. Between, <laughs> between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers. Right. Next week. That's fantastic. That's remarkable. <laughs> I, I have to say that you, you, you sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line, because you started off confidently, but it's you lost your I've had a really busy week, and last night I was like whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning, I woke up, and, you know, Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy, I've been busy. First thing to say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you are romantic. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's great. That's how stressful it's getting. But I knew it all this morning, honestly. No, but that's, that's fine. I think you've summed up the, you know, you've done that. Yeah, right, just, just for a bit of balance, um, I've got your next week's um, homework. It's the same, same series, there's little books, there's tiny little books, just three inches long by two inches wide. Crammed Winston with so much information there. Winston Churchill. There you go. You'll enjoy that. Yeah? I, I'm getting a bit bored now, though. <laughs> this is what happened in school. Think of the listeners. Did really well in infants. Once got to secondary, lost interest. Was it the breakup between <laughs> you and Harris? <laughs> and Zoe. The, 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 wait, I'm wondering if, yeah, you've <laughs> spiralled into something there. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's like all these other... You know, these men, these men of history, they always had sort of things happen in their early childhood, didn't they? Maybe yeah. yours is the Zoe Harris um, dress yeah. incident. Well, let's just refer to it as the Zoe incident. Yeah. From now on. Yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill, the better left out in the Hitler story, Hitler was scared of this man. Yeah. And I can tell you something else about Winston Churchill. Go on. Um, he said he can remember being in the womb. <laughs> and he was born in a public toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Fly record. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> right. for foraging. What do you mean going out yeah. for food? Go they can have a little yeah. hole and go, <laughs> go hunting. Mm. Yeah. This is Carl. He's hungry. He knows he has to get to the greasy spoon by 11. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Many of he... Carl's close friends have never made it across this road. There was a zebra crossing installed just for the safety of Carl. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, can I have a bacon body into... Carl is enjoying his... Wow. <laughs> but he has to get back. <laughs> his girlfriend's asked for one as well. <laughs> She's home with a PlayStation 2. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. Beep. <laughs> Alright, Rick. It was David Bowie impressions earlier. Now it's just a selection of crazy sound effects, like that guy in you Police Academy. You, you said you wanted some. He hasn't got time to make them up. He's reading about Hitler. You heard him. Do a machine we've, gun or a helicopter. We've, we've, we've got to do all our own sound effects. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So do you want to, do you want a week off? Do you not want to learn about Winston Churchill? Why don't you read it if you want to, and just do, if you if you get interested, then read on. I think that because that's what I did with school and it didn't work. <laughs> no, you decided you didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So but hasn't that hasn't that taught you something? <laughs> Can we just do it like a TV series? It doesn't go on forever. We've done three weeks. Give it a rest now for the for like the summer. Yeah, because most series last for three weeks. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah. Okay. What What's your favourite subject in the world? What's your favourite thing in the world? Um, I would have said um, what at school, like no, just, just in, in, in life. life. What's What are you interested? I in? like what? I like little interesting bits, like <laughs> um, <laughs> sentences. Atlantic Ocean. It's got seventeen quadril quadrillion gallons of water in it. Right. Well, that's that's interesting. Without having to read a book. Well, why is that interesting, though? What what are you basing that on? What, what when you when you think of seventeen quadrillion? It's a lot, what, isn't it? What are you imagining? Just like a big wave. Imagine <laughs> how much water. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's your subject then? <laughs> I don't know. No, it's just that that Wilson was your favourite subject. You gave me a fact <laughs> that is so. Well, but that, that sort of thing. Like I said to you before, you were talking about monkeys, and I said. Do you know that if you give a monkey a childbirth tablet, it works on it the same way because it's it's kitted out the same? Could I just say something? We weren't talking about monkeys. What were we talking about then? You no, know, we were talking about something different. And you went, if you give a monkey a childbirth, but it works. That's what you said. No, we were talking about monkeys. We were. We were talking about sneezing. Yeah. Yeah, and you went, if you give a monkey childbirth pills, it works. That's that's that's. Well, we're yeah, well, we're talking about interesting things about sneezing, and I remembered an interesting fact about monkeys. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, um, half past two, brilliant. Um, oh. What did happen to that bloke who used to make the sound effects in Police Academy? I don't know. He was brilliant, wasn't he? Do you remember him? I don't remember. Was him. he called Hightower? Yeah, he was good. Yeah. If yeah. anyone knows, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> girls and boys. Um, you've embarrassed yourself then, Gervais. What? Well, we've had a number of calls and emails yeah. pointing out that the Hindenburg disaster was not because the Zeppelin was filled with helium, hydrogen. but filled with hydrogen. Oh, right, okay. Well, I thought about that when he told me in the well, week. Yeah, but, but I assumed he must have got that off from the do documentary. So it just it just went up. So that's, that's probably why the, the voices didn't go That funny. was probably why it didn't feature in the documentary. Yeah. But it seems to me we should have thought of that. I mean, like, it's school fates and stuff where they're, like, filling little balloons with helium. Yeah. You know, there'd be all kinds of horror stories if they were just, you know, just blowing up, you know, left, right and centre. I don't think you can just blow helium up like that, can you? What? Isn't that the point? What, what I'm mean? saying is it's not, it's, it can't be as potentially lethal as hydrogen, helium. What, hydrogen isn't as bad as helium? No, helium's not as bad as hydrogen. I don't know what you're saying, because that, that Hindenburg was hydrogen. Yeah, and I'm saying, why did we think it was helium? That's crazy. You go to fates, school fates and stuff with like little kids, and they're filling up little balloons with helium. They wouldn't have big canisters of helium, you know, a, a charity event or a you know a small kind of bring and buy sale if it was deadly. Yeah, but it's not as big. I mean, when you buy those balloons at a fair, it's not as big as that. Uh, that that. Big but presumably, balloon. it's still flammable, is it? But it was. It wasn't the fact how dangerous the the rare gas was, or that uh, it was the fact that um, it was made of this thing that caught fire and just went. There was nothing. A hole in it would have been as bad. It just it just burnt quickly and fell to the ground because the hydrogen or helium escaped. It wasn't. It was irrelevant that what what the gas was, wasn't it? I thought Obviously. it was that there was supposed to be some kind of explosion. Well, I don't know what it was, but the point is because the outer thing was so thin, right? 
the the gas inside escaped and it fell to the so ground. So it just fell to the ground like one of the, like when you've popped a balloon. Mm -hmm. Well, not not not. He didn't quite. sort of go. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like flap all over no. the place and make a zany noise. But I tell you what, because when I was looking on the internet in the week f for it, I was like trying to get a bit more info on it. Guess how many balloons it would take <laughs> helium balloons to lift a human up. <laughs> go on. Six thousand. Should we do it? If you want. Brilliant. Next week, that's got to be a challenge. Can we, can we, is, if, is there a sort of balloon company or, or, or some sort of, you know, uh, party company that are willing to sponsor us to lift Carl <laughs> into the air right. with helium balloons? Ten feet off the ground, where we're tethering him down, right? Is there someone willing to pay for 6,000 balloons to try and lift We can maybe up? get some kind of company to sponsor it. I'm thinking like Electrolux, if they're going to sponsor puddings. If they're going to sponsor puddings, uh, you know, and, uh, 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 celebrities, Russ Abbott, they will sponsor Carl being lift. Heat magazine, Heat magazine, come on. They're a big selling, very successful magazine there, and they'd know about Carl because they've mentioned him. Heat magazine, can we have a heat balloon? Yeah? Oh, six Carl, thousand's an awful into lot. Into the air, six. Th yeah, it's the heat. Sa six thousand Carl challenge. Lift Carl ten feet into the air. Yeah. Come on. What about if it was Carl and Doctor Fox? We could get two different balloons. I think we need a lot more than six thousand. A lot more for Fox, to, isn't it? Mix. Yeah. <laughs>… I'm laughing that way. Um, we just had a call um, from someone saying his company would sponsor Carl, right, to be raised by all these balloons if he could have a walk-on part in the office. And uh, uh, we immediately went, oh, we're worried about that sort of thing. You can't really promise that artistically. You know? And I was worried about the legality of it as well. How can you promise someone that for personal gain that's a private and all that sort of stuff, right? And I went, oh, I don't know. And anyway, put the phone down to him and Carl went… <laughs> I love the fact you're more effing worried about that than me being raised 30 feet in the effing air. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you started getting scared, did you? Are you worried about it? Well, you're quite excited about the idea of the challenge, though, aren't you? I like the idea, but I want, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like the idea, Carl? Oh, what if it went all wrong and we're there going, oh, the humanity of it. I think we need Carl to get... Carl is just... He's just... And the, the rope would pull out my trousers and punch <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it's definitely got to be Dr. Fox if that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, we've got to do this. So, hang on, but let's just no. think about the... Because, wait a minute, before, I mean, we say this, but we'd have to get all kinds of health and safety people involved. No, we, no, we wouldn't. Of course we can't. <laughs> no, you're allowed to do it on private land, aren't you? Not what happened to the Hindenburg. No, but that was... There was I was going to say, there was lots of people died. <laughs> Listen, look, all we do is we get all, we get someone, right? But what if what if he go, he gets loose and he just floats off into the air? <laughs> no, we never, and he meets his magpie that he lost. He yeah, used to I peck his grifter. <laughs> So, oh, wait, sorry, on, sorry, wait, wait, listen, we've got to do this. No, but Please. Just have a minute. Let's no. just stop and think about it. It's right. 60,000 balloons. balloons. No, no it's, it's not. It's 6,000. 6, 6, but 6,000 balloons? That's a lot of balloons. No, it's not. No, no, oh, it's not. Be silly. For 6, sponsorship, 000. people pay for... Uh, no, listen, it's worth it. There must be a company out there that are paying for this, just so we can film Hang it. Hang on, is there not an easier way of just getting <laughs> one big balloon? Then <laughs> the challenge is... No. There's no challenge there. No, it's yeah, got to be... It's got our people coming up and hooking balloons. It'd be like Buckaroo. And the person who puts the balloon that actually raises him 10 feet wins a prize or something. So hang no. on, so what we've got, we've got each person with like oh. 500 ballons. Yeah. That's mad. Can you imagine how many balloons that is? That's ludicrous. 6,000. Yeah. That's an awful lot of balloons. I don't know, you'd, what, we'd, there must be someone that, that, that could do this. Oh look, people have walked on the moon for Christ's sake. We can raise Carl Pilkington with some balloons. Yes, but they had a NASA budget. We've got XFM behind us. Yeah, balloons, <laughs> yeah. balloons are cheap. You can get about a pack of 25 for about 150. <laughs> right, fine. <laughs> no, True. Yeah, the helium though, Carl. You can't just like attach yourself to a pack of balloons. No, but... What, oh. you think we blow them all up? With helium. Right. Oh. Off you go. But then we can do something with the balloons, can't we? Like, release them afterwards. Oh, yeah. well, release them back into the wild. <laughs> Brilliant. As a sign of peace. <laughs> <laughs> Fly, my pretty fly, listen, be free. I am so excited. I have not been so excited about, and, and I thought that Robin Ince was going to stay in my cupboard for a thousand pounds. Look, we've got to, we've got to do 6, this. Six thousand balloons. I don't think it's going to happen. That's an awful lot of balloons. And I just don't oh. think, I don't see how we can tether them all to Carl. He's a small man. No, but you can about different lengths, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Carl knows. Can you think about the logistics of this? Oh, someone must know. 
There must be a company. There's a bloke willing to do it. I know, I know he doesn't know the technology of it. He's willing to sort of stumble. And what sort of company just on, has we, access to helium like that? But we can do this. Come on, London. And someone's done Londoners. It, it was on the internet already, so someone obviously has done it. Yeah. So they didn't say, "Oh, we can't get all of the balloons." No, they probably worked it out, didn't they? Must I can't. Been. Carl, you're oh, more right. excited about this than anything else. About your education, about your exam results. You're so exciting. excited. And, and we'll have a little rope. We'll like fly in a little kite, a little Carl. We're like, let's go. Fly Carl, what will you wear? Like a one-piece jumpsuit. Yeah, I mean, that'd be With sponsorship all over it. Oh, it'd be yeah. great. You look like Jackie Stewart, and just as you go up your little face, oh my god, I'm not gonna sleep until this is done. This is the most exciting thing ever. Only ten feet. Ten feet, yeah. We need tethier. some. We need some kind of rope to sort of tether you to the ground. Yeah. We don't want you sort of flying <laughs> this off. This is gonna be great. And you'd have a little crash helmet and everything, and little Deedee boppers on the crash helmet, like yeah. it's a little flying ant. Definitely, definitely. We give him a little. Oh my god, can we give you an outfit like little wings and everything? Can oh. we paint your face with like children's no, paint? I'm not yeah. Doing all that. Why? Oh, no, because that'll be silly. <laughs> oh, please, Carl. Do this. Do it. We'll do it for charity. We'll do it for charity, yeah? Right. Yeah? Oh, this is We'll do it for brilliant. children in need. Please, just phone in if you got if you can help us. Lift Carl up 30 feet. Let's say 30 feet. I think feet. it has to be a decent... Yeah, yeah. it has to be a decent well, height. Is there a world record? Because we want to break that if we're going to Yeah, we want to break that. What is the world record for raising a man by balloons? Yeah. Okay, oh. so listen, let's just, let's just finalise oh. details here. We've got... I'm uh, so excited. ...email address, ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number? UK. What's the number? The number, Carl? 0 8 700 800 1 2 3 4. Uh, lift, again. Carl. Give it again. Lift, Carl. 0 8 700 800 1 2 3 4. Uh, sponsored by Heat Magazine and you, or something Maybe like. even if you've just got an idea about how we might be able to organise it, how we might be able to get it done, if you've got contacts, anything, just get in touch, give us some information. Oh, oh, that'd be great. I'm gonna play a Beatles track for song for the for the lovers. Oh man, it's uh, it's off the Help album and it's um, you've got to hide your love away. Oh, just think of his little face as he goes. Oh. You'd be telling yeah. us. Yeah. Well, XFM, we're near the end of the show. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. We've enjoyed your company. Carl, we're going to try and get Carl in the air. Anyone that can help us, take him up with helium balloons. Um, our friend Johnny Mango called again. And uh, apparently the record's 11,000 feet. Carl is getting a little bit nervous. Yeah, the, the world record is 11,631 feet raised by hot air balloons. How, yeah. how tall is uh, Canary Wharf? It's 11,631 feet. Exactly. What's I don't know, Carl. Is it how much higher? It's a long way. Uh, uh, more. Yeah, I'm not doing Lots that. Because I'm like six foot something. Yeah, think of that. Let's just look at Steve. All right. Yeah. But you can change a record. You could say, well, the sort of balloons are the one with, with Mickey Mouse on it or something. Yeah, could I just, could I just say something? That man did 11,000 feet, but he wasn't naked. <laughs> All right? Come on, Carl. You'll be the, your 30 feet will be the world record for naked ballooning. Yeah? Mm. Think about it. All right, it's for charity. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. We are going to raise Carl. We are going to raise Carl. And after, after uh, Carl said, um, just to think, my teacher said I'd never be a high flyer. So this is your chance, Carl, to shine, to fly. Steve. It'll be brilliant. Uh, this is a final song for the ladies. Spell and Sebastian, we've not heard uh, them for oh. a while. This is from, uh, it's actually a B-side or a triple side or whatever you call it. Um, track three on a single called Jonathan David. This is the beautiful The Loneliness of the Middle Distance Runner. Play Goodbye. <laughs> That was the Travis and some flowers through my window. <laughs> this is our XFM 104.9 of a Saturday afternoon, just gone six minutes past one. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello hi. there, hi. Good hi. to talk to you. Uh, Carl Pilkington is over there. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Keeps it real. <laughs> yeah. Respect, Carl. Oh. Rick, um, I just think, you know, we want to lift off the show straight away. Yeah. Into the uh, stratosphere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. the best way to do that, it seemed to me, was to resurrect a game we used to play when we first began the show in old XFM days. Do you oh, remember the yeah. game, do you remember the game Make rub, Ricky rub, Gervais Rub me hard. Rub you hard? No, no. No, so no. That, that was only in the pilot. We never <laughs> actually did that on live Okay, right. Um, no, it was the game Make Ricky Gervais Laugh. Oh, I remember, and we yeah. we used to get people, like uh, Carl, you probably didn't hear it, we used to get people to sort of send in pictures and, uh, jokes and stuff. And if I could make Ricky laugh on air with those- He won a toffee. Then they won a gift of some kind. Yeah. Anyway, um, a lot of, a lot of emails actually say people love your laugh, Rick. So I was, in a sense, we're giving they, the public what they, they want. They must be taking the mickey. But this is a picture I found in today's copy of The Sun, so if, if, uh, you're listening at home and you want to know what the picture looks like, rush out and buy a copy, only 40p. Yeah. And, uh, it Are we sponsored by the sun? <laughs> we do white van, man. Exactly. <laughs> it amused me straight away this, because bear in mind, right. it is one of the world's biggest rock stars. Okay. Just check out the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Look at that. Oh, that is Michael Stipe. 
Oh dear, we sort of like we're looking like I don't know some sort of Nazi officer. That's not libelous. <laughs> That's not libelous. Mike, you, in your opinion, Michael Stein. Yeah. he's outside there during the press conference yeah. for Peter Bucks. It's quickly. not a good picture. I love. I think I love R.E.M. and I love Michael Stein. I think he's a lovely man, but that's a bad picture, isn't it? He's <laughs> got <laughs> big glasses on and yeah. stubble. Obviously, he's got He doesn't appear to be looking at anything. He's <laughs> no, looking he's right beyond like... everyone else. Can you <laughs> yeah. see that? Carl? I'll tell you, who he looks like he looks like Zig. I think from Zig and Zag. <laughs> It looks like well, he's a muppet go. made of foam. Oh, lovely. Nice the, to see that game the, come back. Yeah, the, 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 the medium success. of radio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a good picture that is. I hope you enjoyed it. Coming up soon, we've got <laughs> Sir David of Bowie, <laughs> Nicholas Cave, uh, <laughs> and Travis. Flowers in the window again. <laughs> Play a song. Right. Aerodynamic on XFM 104.9. It's all right. It's all right now. Uneventful, wasn't it? Really? <laughs> So I, was like, I left a sequencer going. For a <laughs> yeah, popped out for a coffee. Yeah, I don't want to diss the funny little French lads. Sure, but uh, you know, try harder. Are they French? Yeah, oh god, yeah. Sorry. Eh? <laughs> Do you speak much French, Rick? I speak un peu. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can ask where is the Tourist Information Bureau? And, um, uh, I like- I can express my preference in music tastes, and yeah. I can order an Orangina, and that's all I can do. I- I know, um, yeah, blonde, pression, I think. That means, um, draft, your French. <laughs> <laughs> to- to Emily Music Folk? Oh, that's <laughs> filthy. That's what <laughs> that means, Carl. No, go on. Really dirty. <laughs> really dirty. To Emily Music Folk. Yeah, you dirty. <laughs> you- <laughs> you- f- you f- filthy little f- uh, Frenchy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, um, do you know? Do you, do you know much French, Carl? Um, have you got any fromage? <laughs> <laughs> That'd work. That's That's cheese fine. on fish. It's <laughs> cheese. On fish. <laughs> it's cheese. Would you not care which one you were given? You like both. I think, the, I think that's a whole you... different kettle of poisson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think when you're in in a country, you should have a have a little go. <laughs> it, well, well, that's a very little go. Yeah, you, you mean like football hooligans have a little go? What do you mean? <laughs> you know, to try and have have a go at their uh, yeah their language. And well, that. what I do is I go in there and I point and talk a bit louder than usual in perfect English, <laughs> and if they don't get it, I go mental. <laughs> exactly, securing the fact that I've tried my best and now I'm in a laugh. <laughs> and or that is the, that is the, the prerogative of all Englishmen. Or just yeah. point. Point and shout. Yeah, yeah, point and shout. Don't yeah. forget, you, you know, because you can never be foreign if you're English anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're speaking funny. Just remember that. Yeah. Yeah. God save us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on then. You were going to say something else. Yeah. Um. That picture you were showing me. Yeah. Is that I wish we could post one on the website of Carl. Remember we won that? We won an award ages ago. What, what was it called? The British Radio Authority Award. Yeah. And um, we made Carl get in the picture, and he was a bit. Medicine, a bit, it, it came out nice. But his head is perfectly circular. <laughs> I put a coin on it, and it, and only the ears popped out from behind the coin. Isn't it perfectly well, round? I, isn't I it? I mean, w- when you've been saying I've, I've got a round head, I was a bit like, yeah, everyone has. Stop having a go. Yeah. And I saw this picture last week. I thought, God, he's right. Can uh, we? Uh, can we? R- can't we just pop it on the XOM website? I'd rather not. I'll go on. Just Steve, get someone. Have you seen that that man in a jar without a brain? <coughs> Sorry, you have, to, you have to, is that something, is that a product you can buy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, same uh, risk? Is it a dream you had yesterday? Man, you wonder if you could, can I, uh, yes, hello, um, could you make my dream into <laughs> reality, <laughs> please? <laughs> oh, we can't actually, sir. <laughs> In, uh, plastic would be good. <laughs> Sorry, what, what do you mean? In the future, you'd be able to download your dreams and then just like act them out again, probably in the year 2000 or something. Mm. <laughs> Soothsayer. No, there's some museum somewhere. Yeah. That's got this little fella who was born without a brain and he's in a jar and it's just that he's got a really round head. Right. <laughs> and when I saw this picture, I thought, God, it, it just reminded me of this little fella yeah. in a jar. <laughs> oh, and what do you mean he's born without a brain? He was born without a brain. So it's a baby? Um, it's not a little fella. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Do you know the difference? Do you, do you have conversations with like people in prams thinking that fella's little and he doesn't talk much? Yeah. You know, babies aren't like little people. Well, maybe. Well, they are little people, but I mean, they're not. They're not very small adults. They're not like midget. They don't do a job of work, is what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. You very there. No. What do you mean? I didn't read about. it, I just saw the picture. And this is where you're going mind. wrong, Carl. This is the, always your mistake. You see the picture, you don't read the little cat. But what do you mean? How do you, you think guess at what you think the meaning? But how did you know he didn't have a brain? He said something like the brainless man. 
<laughs> yeah, but those people say that about you. It doesn't mean you literally you haven't no, got no, a spinal. No. I, I, I bet somebody's seen it and and knows what I mean. It's a famous picture. Right, right? call in oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Once again, uh, you win a prize if you can tell us what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Just in general, it's an ongoing competition. <laughs> We're trying to find some CDs to anyone who knows what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas, two times. Well, we've had calls confirming that there was indeed, um, a fetus or, or a stillborn child. A pickled born, baby. A pickled baby. No wonder it died. Uh, born without a brain. Um, but everyone has, um, you know, pointed out that it wasn't a little fella. <laughs> it certainly wasn't a little fella. <laughs> no, no. Well, well, because it had been in the jar for a long time, I think it had aged a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you basing you, that on? You do carry on growing, yeah. 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 Well, your ears and your nose. Your ears and your nose. And your eyes don't grow, so, uh, yeah. you could probably, uh, yeah. I'll dig it out for you. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if, if, like, there was an experiment where they were raising a child just based on the information that we said on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. kind of a person it was like they download, be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it kind just, of information would they and have? And it took everything literally. Exactly. And I think, yeah, there was no, there's no irony or, uh, yeah, it was just... They just, everything we said they assumed was fact. Everything and, and, that Carl said And any question, any question it had about the world, it could only ask Carl. Exactly. And it See, was now, his... this worries me because without wishing to be disrespectful in any way, Carl, you know I think you're the best man on earth. When you have a child, we could be in a situation a bit like that. Do you know, is it a concern for you, do you think, that, like, when your son's growing up or your daughter and they're asking you questions, you're conscious, I mean, you yourself have admitted that I you have a, you have a sphere of knowledge which you are an expert on. Ask your mother. You'd say, <laughs> ask your mother. That's good. <laughs> That's great, fair enough. That's good. And I'd play with it. I think I'd be a good dad. Yeah, sure. I think you would. But I wouldn't be the one who's shouting at it. No. No. I who would you get to shout at it? But I mean, Windsor Davis. <laughs> He'd be good, wouldn't he? You horrible little man! <laughs> no, you know, I'd tell it the rights and wrong. You don't have to be a really bright person to know the rights and wrong in the world. Yeah. No, I think you are bright, Carl. You are. And at what point in their, um, in their life would you tell them about the evolution of the baguette? <laughs> <laughs> Which you told us. Or the story of the bee. Yes. That you sc <laughs> scored once. Or the two the... children. Would you ever get them to meet <laughs> as maybe yeah. like that they could be godparents? <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the friends you had at school. Yeah. The, webbed the, hands the, the, and... <laughs> Heads and webbed heads. hands. They weren't friends. That weren't friends. Oh, I wish we could track them, don't Oh, that'd be great. I imagine they're in a zoo. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Oh, yeah. two big That's jars. Yeah. Two big jars. Industrial strength jars. Oh, dear. Oh, man. Guess what? Go on. Um, this is one of our last shows. We're going away, I'm afraid, on the, um, 4th of May, isn't it? I can't remember. That's our last show, the 4th of May. Um, yeah, not forever. I, I brought a downer on the whole thing then, yeah. didn't I? There's people cheering. Well, guess who's taken over from us? And I found this out. I was watching Liquid News the other night. Right. No one had called me. Zoe Ball. Well, she's a good presenter, but is, is this confirmed? I don't know. Uh, should I have said that? Is this true? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, you've done it now. <laughs> yeah. She was in the other day. You watched it on the telly, so. Yeah. But what annoys me is, this is rather like when we got, according to last week's uh, Media Guardian, we got wrapped for, uh, saying the word cock on the radio, and, um, oh. what we never did, did we? That was, we had to read that on the internet. We yeah. no one never told that, us that. That just slipped out of your mouth, didn't it? What's that, cock? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. And, um, now we don't even get told face to face that Zoe Ball's gonna take over. Yeah, but it was only, like, sorted out the other day, and then I, when I saw you We're allowed yesterday, to say ball, aren't we? Yeah. When I saw right. you yesterday, I said, yeah, it's- So we're not allowed to say- oh. No, I, no. I'm not gonna say the word, and we're not gonna say the, we're, we're not allowed to say the- we are allowed to say the male bird is a cock, we're not allowed to say the other yeah. one, but we are allowed to say ball. Yeah. What if her and her dad, Bobby, uh, would they be- would we be allowed to say a pair of balls? Would we be able to say that? And uh, I don't know. I don't I think he's part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need to. In fact, if- if she's listening, call in and confirm it. We'd let her on the air, won't we? As long as she doesn't swear. Yeah, don't be rude. Yeah, don't be rude, Zoe. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be better, cheap, basically. Better warn as well not to leave too much, no, nothing lying around. Cause it'll be gone. <laughs> Especially if it's skag. <laughs> <laughs> Echo and the Bunny Men. Killing Moon. Good to hear that again. Yes. On XFM 104.9. Who are you? I'm Ricky Gervais. Who are you? <laughs> Steve Merchant. Who's that funny little round headed fellow over Carl there? Carl Pilkington. Pilk. Pilky. Pilky. Pilkers. <laughs> well, she ain't called, so mustn't be true. I just didn't think we were, um, being disrespectful to her because we both think she's a fine presenter and I think she'd do very well on it and I think it's a good move as well. Yeah, yeah. but can you just say it's not, not forever? Isn't it? 
No, I, think she'll, stand... I think she'll become more popular than us. And I, mean, I, think, I, think, no, I think I think that'll be the end of us, to be honest. Well, I she think can they're... string a sentence together. I think she'll get lots of PR and everything. And she goes out with Big Boy Slim. Big Boy Slim. Who's, uh, you know... A good DJ. He's a good DJ. And, uh... Is her name Zoe Slim now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, there will be nothing. It's mm. three months, in it? She's taken over for. Is she getting paid the same as us? I don't know. We'll I find it's, out. I bet it's a hell of a lot more. I'll go mental. <laughs> I bet it's good money. It's good money. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go mental. Uh, yeah, well. well, there you go. What are you gonna do? I'm, uh... For three months. Uh, I'm gonna have Saturdays off. What Is you she... Gonna, are, are you gonna present with her? Are you gonna come on and press the buttons? He's not allowed. No, I don't... I hope not. Cos, you know, you're our... Yeah. Whipping boy. Um, <laughs> co-presenter. <laughs> 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 yeah. You're like our little fella in a jar. Yeah. It's in fact, like that's what we should do with you over <laughs> those, uh, three months. <laughs> Keep you in a jar and we can have it we in alternate weeks. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> like step-parents or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Just, you can- Oh, we, me and with... Steve are fighting for custody. Yeah. It'll be a big jar, though. You can- you can put stuff in there. You can- oh, you can have- it won't be- and it won't be, like, um, full of water or, or vinegar or whatever they do. Or you won't become pickled alcohol. car. No. Um, it'd be, it'd be like an air, big air chamber and you're sat, sat there and it'd be like a little, what would he be, in an armchair or something? It'd be in an armchair and we'd, and we'd have stuff in there and we'd bring your girlfriend like once a week and she'd go mm -hmm. and we'd put a blanket over the top so we wouldn't, you know, see anything. But like the Big it. Brother household. Exactly. Yeah. Now that's a hell of a documentary. Oh. That'd be amazing, wouldn't Carl it? Carl in a jar. But anyway, that's <laughs> what, so we're going away on the 4th of May for 12 weeks. It's a long time, isn't we it? We were doing the second series of The Office so we can't be around, I'm afraid. And, and, uh, Zoe Ball standing in for us. And, uh, that can't be right. She's not. St I don't think you can say standing in for us. Isn't that right? Taking over the show, I think, would be fair to say. I don't know. I, got, I can't say anything now, can you? I'm don't worried about that. Just because you goes up with Big Boy Slim, mm. you got to be careful what you say. Yeah. Uh, oh, you look upset. Are you starting to think that we're getting melancholy now that you're just going to sit at home? What are you going to do every Saturday? Don't know. Go shopping. Let's sort out a jar. You've got to do the balloons before then, as well. You've got to send you up in a balloon. Maybe you send you up in a balloon and you come straight down into a big jar. Yeah. And they put a, like a giant cork in straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's a big jar. I'll tell you what we could do. We could set you adrift, like Robinson Crusoe, set <laughs> yeah. the ball and see where you if end you, up. If you find me, yeah. Oh, you might go to an uninhabited island or something. I'll tell you something that I learned in the week. Go on. Just reminded me there about going up in the air. Go on. Right. If cars could drive up, it only took an hour to get into space. Which is great. Going how fast? Uh, about 50 miles an hour. <laughs> you just <laughs> made that up, didn't you? Guess. You just plucked, you just guessed that. You just guessed it. You just said about 50. Yeah, but See, this is what worries me. If you have a, if you have a son or a daughter, yeah. age fi 50, yeah. he's gonna be out in the street with a ramp pointing Dad, into the sky. Dad, how long does elephants live? About a thousand years. <laughs> a thousand or something. I wouldn't say Dad, that. how much can an ant lift? About a quarter of a, quarter of a kilogram. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, about two bags of sugar. If you guess, it's not fact. Yeah. If just because you thought it, that doesn't make it a fact. Does anyone know how long it'd take a car going 50 Let's miles not an hour? People, people are phoning in about anything space. now, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. asked them to phone in about the jar thing. <laughs> <laughs> Switchboard lit up. <laughs> it's crazy. You, like, you asked them to phone in about, like, you <laughs> know, something sensible, yeah. like Che Guevara or, yeah. you know, the life of Mr. Crucial. That, There's that, nothing. That is really a demographic sort of snapshot <laughs> of <laughs> our <laughs> fans. Our audience. Ask them about <laughs> a dead baby without a brain. Oh, yeah. And they're reaching the with their phones. They don't mind what their bill yeah. is that much. We ask them for, you know, I don't know, great quotes or something. Yeah. From the great philosophers, nothing. They just ask them where phone. to buy, yeah, meths. Cheap. <laughs> Straight on the phone. Oh, do you know the the quotes that Ricky gave me last week and I turned them down? Yeah. I got home. Girlfriend had a go at me. They don't know you turned him down. What you know is that he said they didn't right. want to take the book at the end of the show. So I'm not taking it. It's too difficult. I'm gonna go and get a nice one and go on. Come yeah. On. So I went home and uh, Suzanne said, "Where's the book?" She was really looking forward to having a look at it. I said, oh, I gave it him back, I wasn't up for that. And yet, last week I was ill and stuff, I wasn't in the mood for learning. Yeah. So I'm not having it. She goes, this is where you went wrong at school. Oh. She said, this is exactly where you went, went wrong. She said, you know, you liked infants, you liked, uh, you know, you're colouring in and you painting stuff. She said, but as soon as it gets to the heavy stuff, you just, you know, you're like a horse with its blinkers on. Yeah. So you just shut yourself away. So I said, no, I, I just, I could have done if I wanted to. So anyway, um, we went and bought a quotations book, so I have got some quotes. This yeah, really what's the quotation book you bought? So I was asking him to, uh, read Keats and Wilde, Wordsworth, Shakespeare. Uh, what did you buy? It's, it's quotes with, like, Eric and Ernie and that in it. 
<laughs> no, but there's still quotes. <laughs> there's still quotes. <laughs> the yeah. Sesame Street book of quotes. <laughs> Brilliant. That's no, that's quotes. they're still valid. No, it's a starting point. Oh. It's a starting point. Okay. Well, we'll have well, some quotes. We'll have some of that later. after we've the We've got, got yeah. a lot more to get through before oh, we. We've got a bit of new quotes. order. Bit of new order. Excellent. Excellent. New order. Here to stay. <laughs> Um, on XFM 104.9, someone, I, I love our listeners, I really do, right? Uh, someone just called in and said, it's about putting, he went, hello? Carl answers the phones. I said, hello? He went, hello? He said, yeah, about putting Carl in a big jar, and Carl went, go on. <laughs> uh, the bloke went, well, then you could call him Carl Pickleton. And he went, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I love the bothering. I like Carl Pickleton. That's, yeah, that's lovely. Right. That's so sweet. He spent 50p to tell you that and you were worried. You just saw you going up in a balloon and landing in a jar again, didn't you? What have you gone through yet? You've had nothing but good feedback from this show now and now you're just getting all worried, aren't you? Heat magazine say you're a genius. You've got your picture in that Extracts magazine with a little round head. You have Jaffa Cakes. I gave him a fiver the other week to buy biscuits. He's having the time of his life. Yeah. This is the best day. This must be your best two hours of the week. I enjoy it, yeah. <coughs> it's all right sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's better regular than this for you? What's a better two hours a week? Uh, Sleep doesn't count. Um, actually, you're probably right. It might be this. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, about twenty four things good. All right, like well, probably worth sorry. mentioning, Suzanne. Yeah, your girlfriend. your girlfriend. Yeah, well, that goes without saying, doesn't oh, it? Oh, he's done it. Mean? He's oh. pulled it round. <laughs> he's pulled it round. He's a charmer. If she could come in and sit in the corner, then yeah, it would be the best time ever. That's pretty sweet, actually. Oh. And she's not even in London at the moment. Oh, well, so you want then. have to say that. Yeah. You have to say it, and you did anyway. Yeah. That's she lovely. Might, she might be listening to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's quite digital, isn't it? There's always that. There's always, <laughs> always that danger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, Steve, over well, to I you. Am I just was wondering, because I, obviously I, I've had an exciting week, relatively speaking, Rick, because yeah. uh, instead of just spending it all with you, yeah. sat in a little room, yeah. um, <laughs> as is our way, yeah. I've been doing some acting this week, as you I know. I know, I know. And I don't normally act, uh, but I, um, basically there's some people at the BBC who are making a, a comedy pilot, kind of comedy TV show, and, uh, you know, and I auditioned for it, and the role was uh, to play a sort of freaky looking sort of lanky geek, you know, and I don't want to say- beat, How did you beat off I don't want to sound arrogant, Rick, but they gave me the job on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, it was like, you know, obviously I'm, you know, cause I'm not a bad actor, I'm not as good as Rick, but I'm, you know, I'm- What I'm, is it, it's, what is it, it's, the, it's a, it's a, I play a really tall guy, like a sort of- That's the part seven. of it, that's the part though, isn't it, about, you've got a beard. I'm a character who's, um, six or seven inches tall and I'm trying to win the world's, uh, tallest man. That's it, yeah, yeah. But, uh, there's always a man that beats me every year because he's slightly taller, but this year I think for some reason, because I've been training, I can beat him. That's the and, um, Sally Phillips, I don't know if you know Sally Phillips, she, she's a very good, uh, comedy writer and actress and she's written it. So it was good fun and so we went down there and it was good and everything. It was, you know, a little trailer and everything. It was like the proper deal. It was really good. And, um, the problem was yesterday I had to dance. One of the sequences had me dance. Now, as you know, I think I'm a pretty groovy dancer. I'm yeah. pretty, I'm a bit of a mover. Yeah. And I have to tell you this, Rick. Do you have anyone's eye out with your elbow? <laughs> I have come to some serious realizations about my dancing. Really? I was moving around like a shire horse dancing. Really? It was terrible. I was just like quick and they, they say this choreographer trying to show me some moves and it was just he was, he was just like crying by the end yeah, of it. Yeah, it was they, they really were, they were, <laughs> Yeah. It was so bad but the worst thing about it is, today, my whole body is ravaged with pain and agony. It's, I'm utterly devastated by the, the agony of it. Trying to get down the stairs this morning, I swear to God, I look like Thor Heard. <laughs> trying to hobble that, it was mad. I was like I'd had several <laughs> hip replacements. I was like, I had to go down at an angle, going down the stairs, it was ludicrous and I was really worried. Suddenly I'm thinking, because I thought I was pretty fit and pretty sure. uh, groovy and everything. Mm. And I had been discussing with, um, this mate of mine, my housemate, that we should maybe do start doing some exercise because mm. I'm putting on a little bit of weight, right, he's quite a thin tall guy, he has a belly, I don't know how to summarise it, have you ever seen the film Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, yeah. It looks like that. Really? It's slightly grotesque. So the two of us, right, so we suggested, we decided that we were going to do some exercise together, right? This is what we're going to do. We, each morning we were going to get up, we were going to exercise together. That won't happen. Right. Well, no, but wait, Rick. You see, you're wrong because a couple of days ago I said to him, listen, what we should do is get one of those, like, health videos. You know, those kind of training videos, what they're called, like, um, I don't know, they might have an aerobics thing or yeah. a sort of hour long workout. And I said to him, get one of the ones that's hosted by, like, um, Pauline Quirk. Oh. Elle McPherson or Cindy Crawford, you know, you know, someone like that, someone sexy, right? So, uh, I swear to God, we went down this morning, we put it on, right? Just want you to picture this scene, right? It's me and my mate in our shorts, right? Nine o'clock in the morning, working out- You didn't actually do it. To Helen from Big Brother's <laughs> video, right? That was, it was the cheapest one, Stevie told me. Thanks very much, mate. We saw that advertised as yeah. well. 
we're working out right, and the two of us in our shorts, she's there, like, the, you know, she's the closest there is to a living Homer Simpson, right, shouting out and stuff. I just wanted to be reassured, Rick. There's nothing gay about that, is there? Um... There's nothing a touch kind of fruity about that image. No. I mean, I th the ones you do avoid would be sort of Liza Minnelli, right, work out. Cher. Um, uh, Graham Norton, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um... Del Winton. Gay Byrne. Right, sure. He's not gay. No. But, I mean, the name's a little yeah. bit gay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, So yeah. I think, I, I think, Helen from Big Brother, you're probably safe. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Who else? I don't know what, what else to tell you, really. Um... But, I mean, because I know you've got a personal trainer. I'm obviously not in that kind of state, those kind of states at the moment. I don't have that kind of cash. No. But, um, you know, I'm obviously quite excited. What have I got to look forward to? Do, do I go through a My, 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 uh, my trainer, Pink Eric, we call <laughs> him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I, um, I sort of box a little bit. But what I'm saying is, do you go through a pain barrier? What, cause no, 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 I stopped way before that. <laughs> right. And okay. I sit down and have a beer. Right. You don't, there's no, there's no point in going <laughs> through pain because it just put you off. Sure. So, um, if, if, if you, you know, start feeling any sort of pain or, or any, um, breathlessness or any aches, <laughs> yeah. sit down immediately. <laughs> now, is it right that he's worked out a special routine for you where you don't have to get up? Yeah, when he actually said, I remember the first, was, uh, I got my food diary and he was looking at it. And I could see he was, he, he sort of feared it. He feared taking on this challenge. And it's a true quote. At one point, uh, he, he said, right, um, okay, cut cheese down to five times a week then. I must have haggled from four. <laughs> cheese down to five times a week. <laughs> and it, it sort of like, I'm my own worst enemy. Because if I cut out cheese and beer, I would just lose weight. Like, it would drop off me in a month. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just, I'm fighting it all the time. I'm, yeah. I haven't changed my sort of eating and drinking habits, but I now work out three times a week. It is an uphill struggle, Steve. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just so uh, you're just keeping it an even keel. I know, well, I, I, yeah, so I can live longer to eat more cheese and beer. Do you exercise, Carl? Do you do any exercise whatsoever? I, I used to go to a gym in town, but it wasn't the sort of, the hard work of doing the, you know, the stuff. It was just that like, it was like 60 quid a month. Yeah. I thought, well, <laughs> crazy, know, isn't it? That's not good. So I just got out of my way to sort of walk everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Sort mm. of jumping on a bus, like a nice day like today, walking to work, or uh, you know, run up the stairs. You're <laughs> skinny though. <laughs> you run up the stairs. What? You're really skinny though. No, but I, I do eat a lot of like crappy food. So yeah. I reckon. I mean, what do they say? When you get to thirty, it all just you go mental, don't you? Yeah, you know they say I mean? that, play record. That's, is, who's, uh, that's the philosophers, no, isn't no, it? When you get to 30, you go mental. No, oh, I mean, Descartes. Yeah, <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. Play record. Better Bowie? Oh, yeah, oh, I brought this in. You'll love this, Steve. Oh, you know this, I think, I'm sure. This is, uh, uh, a great Bowie track off Aladdin Sane, one of my favourite albums. And this is Lady Grinning Soul. It's, it's beautiful. Bertie Drawn Boy, Silent Sigh on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. You can do your own... Oh, right, okay, my name's Steve Merchant. Yeah, I'm Carl. I'm Carl. Yeah, exactly. You're not, you've not lost interest, have you, Rick? Uh, no, of course I haven't. Okay. God. It's silly to, uh, I've said it once, I, I, get, I was a bit bored with just saying your names. Okay. I don't mind saying mine, because I'm sort of interested in that. <laughs> yeah, sure. But the other ones are sort of more of a chore. Do you okay. know what I mean? There's okay. nothing in it for me. Yes, <laughs> there's no actual I'd game. rather not mention either of you. Okay. So, if you want to do it, from yeah. now on. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, listen, um, obviously still got plenty to come. We've obviously got uh, some great music, Rick, and that's uh, well, I've got, um, a bit of Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds. Um, actually, an album you introduced me to, and I'm gonna play, um, Into My Arms. Looking forward and to And you it. know how beautiful that song is. That's true enough. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I was just, obviously I was talking about this little bit of acting I was doing yesterday, and, uh, not wishing to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved, but there was, um, obviously some extras or supporting artists, as I believe they're known, and, you know, all good, good lovely people, really putting the effort in, doing good work and everything, but there's this one guy I stood next to, and, you know, he's quite a tall guy, uh, not quite as tall as me, but tall guy, you know, quite a good looking bloke, whatever, and, uh, I just sat there, and he, he obviously gets quite boring, because there's a lot of just hanging around, and people waiting and stuff, fixing lights, I just stood next to him, and he just went, oh, he was looking for something to say to me, obviously, and he went, looking forward to the new Guns N' Roses album? <laughs> And I went, I didn't realise there was one on the way, actually. He went, yeah, yeah, obviously they, uh, it, uh Slash won't be in it, because obviously Slash is not with them, but, uh, <laughs> bloody a sweet child of mine. One of my, one of my favourites. Just started singing some of the songs. <laughs> I went, okay, great. Without went, yeah. irony, I Absolutely assume. without irony. He was just wanting to get onto a discussion of Guns N' Roses. But I'll tell you this, he did not look like a rocker in any way. He looked like a bloke who would work in, sort of, an accountancy, Barclays. uh, agency. Uh, yeah, or Barclays, yeah, behind the counter, something like yeah. that. Very well scrubbed, well groomed. I say, there's you know. nothing wrong with Barclays or the people who work therein. <laughs> That's true enough. Okay. So he goes, yeah, I mean, I, I got into them with uh, Appetite for Destruction, the classic first album. Um, but I even, you know, I enjoyed 
of the spaghetti incident as well. I mean, I like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, right, okay. And he goes, I said, um, uh, I said to him, have you ever seen them live or anything? He went, I have not seen them live, no, but I was lucky enough to be at Donington, Monsters of Rock, <laughs> and, uh, Slash's Snake Pit was playing, <laughs> which was Slash's solo effort. Yeah, yeah. Remember. And he went, I've never been, I've never been to, uh, those live gigs before. And, uh, I was down in the mosh pit. Oh, man, and I was down there, and I'll tell you this, have you been in the mosh pit? I went, oh, no, he goes, oh, it's crazy down there. It's wild. A guy p threw a punch at me, I punched him, knocked him straight out. He knocked me out, someone's his fight went off. Oh, it was amazing, it was amazing, amazing. I went, you're gonna go back? He went, no, I won't, because once you've done something like that, you can never repeat the, um, the experience. You know, I mean, I was, they, everyone there was dressed in black. I think I was the only guy wearing a white t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, okay, I could just imagine him tucked in as well. That's, why, that's why I attacked him. Exactly. It's like ants. <laughs> yeah. They, they so slash themselves and yeah. get the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's a termite in the nest. <laughs> exactly. And they just turned on him. But so the venue, so I'm going, okay, so, so, do you go to gigs often? He went, no, I don't think I'm ever gonna go to another rock gig. And I said to him, why? And he went, I don't think any gig I go to will be able to top the experience of seeing UB40 live. <laughs> And I, do you know what I mean? And I uh, almost uh, did what well you that's, did. Well, that's why I've never seen him live, because I don't want to end my life. But I almost laughed. No point I thought it was a joke. I thought he was making a joke, and I was about to laugh, and I realised he was deadly serious, and I went, You be I went, 40. Oh, good were they? He went, absolutely blinding. Um, one of the sure. most incredible live experiences I've ever seen. I imagine. Um, did remarkable. they do songs in a sort of mock reggae style? Apparently for they two did. hours. And then he Excellent. began to tell me which, which of his favourite, he went, I, I don't know if, I said, have they done anything recently? Or put anything out? He went, I don't think they're gonna be able to top, um, those classic albums, Bag of Rhythm, and yeah. Right in the Kitchen. I remember once when I went to sign on, Okay, and it, I don't know what year it was, it must have been like 1979 or something. And, uh, my foot, I've left school. And, uh, um, tell me if I'm wrong if it wasn't out then, but this bloke was at the back with sort of like a ghetto blaster and he was playing one in ten. <laughs> right. Obviously making a point, he was in the dole office. <laughs> yeah. Everyone ignored him <laughs> and when it finished playing he turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he took, wow. it, took a number and queued. The days when they were a protest. Bank. When was that? What year was that? What year oh, did I? I, I uh, someone can pinpoint that for me. Phone in. Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. I know it had just come out. But um, but what was amazing is when he said that about you before him being the best live experience I've ever seen. I th it was one of those moments where you thought I never thought I'd hear someone say that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why that. I can't understand what kind of person you are. I suddenly realised at that moment there was such a chasm between us. Is there anyone out there whose favourite band is you before him? <laughs> Red, wet wine, 40. maybe. You be you be you be forty, yeah. Oh, they're, anyway, they're a great God bunch of blokes, though. You see them, they they crack me up when I see them interviewed. They're really funny. But um, once you've heard one, that's pretty much it, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. I imagine. I mean, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm a Philistine. Maybe there's some hidden depths to them that we don't understand. Uh, maybe some great tracks that you could yeah. play if you're a big fan. Well, I'm never going to go and see him because. What, yeah. Why? No, no. Why sort of like top your experiences? Exactly. You no, know? because you're never going to better it. When when I know I'm definitely dying, yeah. I'm going to go. You'll summon them get to me play for you. Yeah. Get me, give me do, get me labour of love live. Do, do right in the kitchen <laughs> now. This is a little bit of a treat that I thought I would uh, charm you with, Rick. Uh, from The Cure's Greatest Hits, this was this double CD that they brought out recently, including 18 acoustic versions of their greatest hits. Yeah. And this is the acoustic what version. What have you gone for? I've gone for, glad you've asked, just like heaven. Wise choice. XFM 104.9, lovely that one. Brilliant, isn't it? The acoustic version of Just Like Heaven from yeah. uh, The Cure's uh, like double it. CD I'm greatest loving it, loving it, loving it. Collection. Now, again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. <sighs> I had lunch with him. And uh, we were chatting. And having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes, was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't- Yeah. Oh, God. I can't believe So it was the tree that did it. <laughs> I mean, he was probably the only, and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror, and he liked horror stories, and I, and I told him this story, and, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the radio, but I told him this story, um, it was a, it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah, and, um, what it was, it started off just, there'd been a car crash, you see, it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate, and he was going, Dave. And he sort of, he, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror, and then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh wow. Right? 
Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh, no, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine remaking <laughs> that film, but it's two <laughs> chickens <laughs> in horrendous car crash. <laughs> It Their own fault for driving me. <laughs> 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 it would work. No. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. And I think he said, how long was this film? I went, oh, no, five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. <laughs> I like the way that Carly and something like, when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's, he's, get, he, he's annoyed, yeah. Like, I you haven't- I wanna see it. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. But they should have thought it through a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he said, I can get you out of here. He said, what you got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that means there's a, been a, yeah, a uh, dead body, yeah. Yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you gotta do is go into, like, the, uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the- get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out and you can run away and escape, yeah. right? So she goes, yeah, alright then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll- I'll- I'll bury you, right? And then I'll come- I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but That's that, the that point. it doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl, it right, really okay. matters. Listen, I, I don't right. know if I'm gonna ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the f end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back and she has to get no, buried alone. No, be better than yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, she, right. she, she does it, she gets into the coffin. Yes. Yeah, Go on. Right. So she gets in the coffin and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's and she, buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere so she's thinking this is it and getting out. And uh, yeah, she's lying there for ages and thinking why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd it help escape. Oh, how bad is that? That is <laughs> how bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive, then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she is buried alive yeah. and can't get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, "Actually, I'm getting out of here." Yeah, this isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having told yeah. that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is, Have that, you seen any? is that your favourite horror thing ever? That that's a good one. And um, let's see if anyone knows what the finger is. When that bloke oh, was yeah. under the ground, wiggling we're, his finger. We were talking about one with, uh, some fella who's stuck in the ground or something. <laughs> There's a- this is a motif I noticed in your particular <laughs> favourite ones. <laughs> yeah. Right? People no. stuck in the ground. Go yeah, on. right, so she's- she- uh, It's a fella, see, is it? Yeah, it's- yeah, a fella stuck. Now, I seem to remember it just being his foot, to be honest, being stuck in a hole. I'm no, he was under the ground and he had a, he got a little thing out of the pavement and he put his finger up and wiggled it to try and attract attention. Then you see a woman come along and her stiletto wheel just knocks his finger off. You see, I'm wondering whether it's the same one as I saw. Yeah, it could be two like that, couldn't there? <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, they were running it's, out of ideas by the last series. It's a, it's a big theme in Hollywood. <laughs> or, um, what was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? Right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, the this, is, now, this is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales of Inspect, right? And it was, um, uh, this- these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look- look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, um, the- the wife or the son of a- a dead eminent person, like, might be a priest or a doctor or something like that, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died and he owes, uh, a hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff, and, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want them to say, just pay him, yeah. you know? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And they did, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, M oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> more than that, I don't understand how a video is gonna be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. I can't even nodded like yeah. you caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do 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 Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises, isn't Occasional it? groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought you were gonna make point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. Now, I yeah. thought of that. Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Could think about it. <laughs> You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> now, she's a good looking lady. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we've got a uh, white van Carl. Oh, excellent. Oh. Star Sailor, poor misguided fool. Well, it's time. Whoa. Go on. That time, innit? Yeah. Play Go the on. jingle. Yeah. White van man, yes. Carl. <laughs> Brilliant. Recorded at great expense, that <laughs> jingle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is where we just, uh, hijack an idea from the sun, which is, um, white van man, where the sun asks, um, in this instance, a cabbie by the look of it. Oh no, um, a fruit and veg shop owner. Ours is, ours is, uh, ours is slightly different, because the sun sort of like, um, uh, pick on a perfectly normal member of the public. Exactly. So that's where we've got the- yeah. <laughs> the upper <laughs> hand. Yeah. And, uh, they ask him about the, uh, you know, the hot potatoes. Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you, well, your, just your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sisson's Not asked some probing what, questions? It, uh, no, I thought it was- wore a burgundy tie. I thought, uh, that's it, yeah, he just had a- it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See that? That's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving her a, a, a bit of coverage, <laughs> and showing, you know, what a, a, what, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like funeral cards and that, and and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think you know when you send what, the what, card. What would you What would you suggest? Well, you know, um, whoopee cushion, but on the vicar's chair. What What? How would you live no, it up? Just, just, just little little things in the card. I mean, you're just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy, <laughs> so oh, that'd be good. So when, so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card, and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe like if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah. Or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why have, why has everyone got to be so sad about someone dying? No, what annoys right? me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone nan, nan dies. She was 102. And, um, what, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's I, a picture in the paper I today. I don't understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of, uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the, uh, the funeral. Uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday, and there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she—you can tell she's just tired. Well, she's she just tired and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just what are we doing? When their nan dies, exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tully Tubbies? No. <laughs> the Queen Mum. <laughs> oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> oh oh dear. dear. I mean, I, I know. I'm sure you know. I don't know much about her. I don't know if she was a great woman. And obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies. But it's like it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing for hours upon hours to see her yeah. dying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting if you're over from Sweden and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's like, Oh, I mean, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um... I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh, <laughs> What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about you, this? Do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, choosing the, you know, 
eye colour. Well, this or, is the, or, this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so it means that you know wh where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like we, in the future? We, if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be we be like? How will we be considered in that's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. And that's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought- that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember- when- when we- you know, I was growing up on this estate- This is gonna be good. Go on. No. No, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So, growing up on this estate, and there was a- there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> Alright? Didn't fancy her. Oh, God, no. Right? <laughs> but she had a Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So, like, being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Tattoos? Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it look nice. Yeah. Right? But she didn't. And a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did they get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Must have gone. you seen horse in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of leather? <laughs> Right? Um, oh, that's great. I did Big out. Jake come <laughs> looking <laughs> for it. I, I, I didn't <laughs> out. So, <laughs> like, so let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or. <laughs> 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 let me get a um, horse from. What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, Where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? And how long did he have it for? Until Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door! I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, Obi! Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, I exactly. don't think- That's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so always to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and They it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and, you know, sort of go back to, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just- just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This- What? And when I- when I was doing- I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in- in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming! What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What do you mean? Well, wait, 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 let's play a record, story. let's play a record and come back to this, because the story's gonna just unravel and unravel, it's gonna go for hours. Let's play a track, Carl. It deeper and deeper, it's yeah, like an on, onion, Carl. isn't You've, it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I mean, I, I come just, from the West Country, I've never just, heard anything like that. I just think of a big, sort of, like, orange carpet and a, 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 a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really- I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto genetically, like, genetically modified babies, but and then somehow. Carl started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was. Because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's you relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you- But well, what I'm trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand. What, so does what she a look picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a- I know this respect to her. Bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline- Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. 
Her daughter had stolen a horse. Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they they kept the horse in the house with. Them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long? No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No, in what there. happened was I was. Um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget, well I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making idea. over so, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups and, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut- you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they wouldn't have survived. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, cos I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Cos it's a bit rough. So, as I went- The horse went, thank god for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've been, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet, <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. No, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a you central know, heating? Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that! <laughs> no, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Come on, sixty-four yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, like homeless people, always have dogs. And yeah. she said, "Oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it." And I said, "They've got that dog is happier than most dogs, right? Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah, it's with its owner all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah, it doesn't you know eat. I mean? But other than that, <laughs> no, it does eat. Though they're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse. Was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Is that for a start? Yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the by. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit, what we were talking about, it was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, mm -hmm. right, and Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> So- Come on, work with him. So you take it to <laughs> your doctors, and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till like ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> chase cars! Right. What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! No. Was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam. It was called right. Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good-looking kid, but as time went on and all that, like not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. It's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> 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 and chasing cars on that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely uh, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. Ooh. But am I right? Oh, uh, you're always right, Carl. Finally, white van man, what do you make of the fact that Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins? <laughs> 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 Is, Is that, that true? Is that for you? Is that true? Apparently so. Why? Don't know. Like it's easier to stack. Oh, this is what the guy in the uh, sun has said. That should be interesting for- <laughs> 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 That should be- <laughs> His comment on Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins <laughs> is no- Is that should be interesting for meatballs. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> Ricky's just collapsed on the floor. Let's just play a song, Carl. I don't think even you can top that. Black level marks out of crow. Whatever happened to my rock and roll? Well, near the end of the show, just yeah. time for, uh, the re-education of, um, Carl, revisited. Mm hmm Still got Nick Cave to come, haven't we? Absolutely. Uh, now, Carl, you read a, a quote book. What did you learn from it? What, what, to, to some pearls of wisdom. Just get, keep it down to one or two, your favourite things and why you like them. Right, well, you said, like you said, you said just pick a couple. Yeah. Right? So I wrote a couple down yeah. last night. And what, what I did, so they, so they weren't boring, right? I've sort of- I don't uh, think you can ever be boring, no, but No, 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 but what I've done, I've, I've took like different ones, so I've took a, a good one, that I think, yeah, that, that's a good quote, that was worth putting in a book. I put one that isn't really a quote, so I don't understand it. Oh, one, yeah. One that isn't clever. <laughs> and, um, and a funny one. So a bit of variation or out, yeah. out of one book. Oh, how long did this take you? What did you do? Did you sort of like sit- About half an hour last night. And did you sit sort of like quietly at a desk or well, something? N uh, nah, just in the lounge with the telly turned down. Oh, right. Just to give a bit of light to the room. Just sure. had it on but turned down. Have you figured out lights yet? So, uh, <laughs> so the first one, never heard of him, uh, this guy called Dean Axon. Right. And this is a good one. He said, the memo is written not to inform the reader, but to protect the writer. That's good, yeah. yeah. Stuff, that's very good. That's yeah, it, that's... Yeah. So it relates a lot to, you know, office life and so on. Yeah, modern world and that. Mm -hmm. Right, so then, I thought, yeah, right, so I wrote that down because I liked it, and that's yeah. what he said to do. Second one, isn't really a quote, it's more of a, a poem. Okay. So how does that work? Well, yeah, that's okay. Just read it, just read it. Right, well, I won't, it's about suicide. Okay. Right. Razors pain ya, rivers are damp, acids stain ya, drugs cause cramp. Gun guns aren't lawful, nooses give, gas smells awful, so you might as well live. Lovely. That, is that from uh, Dorothy uh, Parker? That, I tell you it what. It is, yeah. It, I hate it. I hate that. Why? I just, it's, no, it's nothing to me, that. I think that's- what, what, it's just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. a weak, right. shallow All piece right. of well, this mock is, comedy. This is, this is why I did it in that order, cause that's what I thought. It's sort of like, it's sort of like a, it's like a zany vicar would write from living in Froome when he's right about then. 55 and get it published in the- it, I hate it. Alright, so you're saying you're not a fan of Dorothy Parker's work, right? Right. Now the next one, Oscar Wilde. Yeah. Right, he's known, isn't he? Yes. Look, look what he comes up with. <laughs> All art is quite useless. Well that's- what, what's up with that? Well it isn't, I did art. No, I know, but it's- go on next. But how did- how has art helped you? <laughs> how has it been useful to you? It was a bit of a- it's- it's one of the only things I like doing at school. Right. Do you know what I mean? When I made that little clay man, getting it- fixing a car. Yeah. You, you know, made a clay man fixing a car, I forgot about that. How- how can he- I, I think that's stupid. And especially that it's gone in a book. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Okay. It's easy to- to diss things. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's harder to you're right. Exactly right. Um, I don't- I don't think art is useless, by the way. But then you don't have to agree or disagree with some of these things. Some of them are, you know, so that someone, some, sometimes it's just their thoughts put eloquently or poetically, isn't it? And it's just, you just know- Just to provoke a reaction as much yeah, as anything. Yeah, yeah. Mm, well. And the good one, Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, the <laughs> ir sorry, but let's go back there. The irony is that that is art. That he 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 was an artist, wasn't he? So, but you you don't, okay? So you don't like Oscar Wilde, but you <laughs> prefer Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> yeah, go on. Ozzy Osbourne, crack him on this. Funny and educational. <laughs> I bit a head off a bat the other night. It was like eating a crunchy wrapped in a chamois leather. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> 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 oh, oh you're right, you're right, Carl. Yeah. yeah. So, there's- What do you like about that? The way he's described what it is like- I think, yeah, if someone- I mean, that- you can imagine what it's like. Cause I like crunchies. Yeah. And, it's like and, a yeah. and a chamois leather's really chewy, so you, you can imagine that's like the skin. So you like and his- you like his descriptive yeah, writing? The crunchy bit is like the bones and that. Yeah. It's perfect. But you know, Carl, it's interesting because you've analysed Aussie there, and in a way, that is the first step on maybe doing a new English GCSE. Yeah, you know, you being just able to said, study you said language what you like it. And you said because it describes what about what you've never eaten about yourself. Yeah, but my teacher, Mrs. Kane, if I would have come into school with, uh, you know, a quote by Aussie Osborne, she wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> sure. Really? Do you know what I mean? And that's the difference between. She'd my go opinion. right, Carl, get your horse and go home. <laughs> well, listen, though, we were talking about other quotes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Neil Armstrong. Yeah. Do you know his one? Yeah. What one? giant leap for mankind. Do you know it wasn't meant to be that? You know it's, it says, um, it's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, right? Yep. It was meant to be, this is one small step for a man. Right. 
I.e. Yes. me, the individual, uh, on a microcosmic level, one giant leap for mankind. And he mucked it up. Because if you say, this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, it, man there means mankind. I know, I know, I know. It's embarrassing. So he, so he, oh, so you shouldn't give people, he's not a trained actor. <laughs> That's true He's enough. more of an astronaut, to be Has honest. Has he won any awards, uh, Rick? No, there are no <laughs> awards. Is he have to nominate? Don't think so. <laughs> but listen, right, he said another quote as he, um, as he got back into the rocket. Have you heard about it? Go on. We run out of time, and I'm just wondering why it's worth saving as a bit of a teaser for next week. <laughs> <laughs> what did Neil Armstrong say as he got back into the rocket? Yeah, is it going to be away? something like uh, that? Was boring, wasn't it? <laughs> the mic's not still on, is it? Yeah, they're not still listening. Well, that's what I was saying to you. He could have said that, and it would have still not gone down. Geez. It would have still <laughs> gone down as an amazing <laughs> quote, wouldn't it? Well, listen, that's, I think you should save it, Carl. You I was meant to go for No, first. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what we'll do, Carl. We'll squeeze it in before the end of the show, because, Ricky, you've got to play your song for the lovers. Oh, we should play this. Oh, I don't think we'll fit it in. We might have to save it. Don't worry, we'll see what we can do. Well, next play, week, uh, by the way, you've got Happiness Quotations, a collection of thoughtful words and beautiful paintings. I'll just give you an example of one. Happiness is a perfume you can pour on others without- you cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself. It's lovely, that, isn't it? Brilliant. You can't be happy with that. But this is Nick quick. Cave and the Bad Seed, uh, from the Boatman's Call. It's a beautiful song. Any song that starts off, I don't believe in the interventionist God, is all right by me. And this is Into My Arms. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, uh, Into My Arms. Well, that's it. We've run out of time. We have indeed. So no, no time for, um, Carl's quote. That'll have to come next week. Yeah, we'll save that for Neil next time. Armstrong. Um, well, I hope you, uh, enjoyed it. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, Rick. Come on, I'm feeling a bit chirpier. It's not that depressing. Why? Well, yeah. Sports next. You know how excited you are. Go on. You love the sport, <laughs> do you?